Hey everyone, I'm going to go out on a limb here tonight and tell you what I think is likely to happen maybe in the next coming year. Uh, I don't really know. So it's, uh, you know, the Bible says in the end days we'll all be able to prophesy and, uh, so I'm going to, t I'm going to, um, take a chance here and tell you what I think based on something that I watched tonight on the news. And, of course, I've spoken before, and I didn't prepare this video because I'm doing it on the fly, but I've spoken before about the, the uh, kings of Persia in, in Daniel, I think it's chapter 11, uh, and it says what happens in the latter days to Israel, spiritual Israel. I was talking to Daniel, and, of course, these are demons that God fought with, uh, with his uh, chief prince Michael, which is the archangel of Michael, so these these are spiritually you know, the Bible's a spiritually discerned book. However, there's this thing called the spirit of error, and the spirit of error. If something's an error, that means it's not in Christ. It's not in truth. It's something other than the truth of God. It's something other than sound doctrine. Um, keep unto themselves teachers having itching ears, you know, tell us what we want to hear. Uh, it's not what the truth is. It's something that makes people comfortable. So, like I said, um, I'm going to use an example of this Canon Andrew White. I watched on uh, Judge Janine tonight um, talking about building unity in the Middle East, being reconciled one one another together in the love of the Lord, because the Lord loves everybody. And this is, um, this is what I think that the, the son of perdition, the man of sin, is going to stand on. This um, sentimental humanistic type of love, which, you know, where Jesus says, love your enemy as yourself. And, of course, he's talking to his actual disciples. He's not talking to people in the world. He's not talking to a world church center. center. He's not talking uh, to, about building world unity. Jesus says that uh, um, if a man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And I think this is what Satan's uh, uh, using the day to confuse um, would-be followers of the Lord. They confuse um, natural love, their natural love and understanding, which comes through the natural intellect, with the love of God, which is what Jesus, who Jesus Christ followed, his Father that was in heaven because he loved he wanted to do his will of the Father, and his Father, of course, is building a people unto himself, spiritual Israel, and also the scripture talks about the lost, the wicked, and the righteous, and of course the righteous are ones that walk in the Holy Spirit of the Lord, which is the spirit of truth and not the spirit of error. Um... But most of the world will follow the um, man of son, sin, the son of perdition, because he wants to be worshipped as God. And this is, of course, Satan incarnate. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit of the Lord um, within you and, and you follow him, um, precisely in spirit and in truth who is Jesus Christ alone then you're going to be sucked into this Babylonian world church system which the book of Revelation speaks about 17 and 18 um, and so this is why I'm saying I'm going out on a limb on a, on a, on a, when I'm saying this tonight because I think that the uh, son of perdition the man of sin that wicked will appear and he'll do many signs and wonders and it will probably come 
from the seven hills of Rome, uh, you know, the seven rivers of Rome, the, as the seven heads, and, you know, if you go back and read Revelation 17, the mother of harlots, well, the mother of harlots, the chief whore, and her offspring, daughters, would be the denominations of the world church. And, of course, this is, this is a look-alike, using the Bible, the theology, to, um, to the ones who actually have the Lord Jesus Christ abide and move in him. So if they're doing it independent of the Holy Spirit of God, actually those who abide and move in him, um, they can't be doing it in the Spirit of God, who is the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ. So it's almost like a uh, New Age type of uh, Christianity, if you will. This bringing together the world in unity. Let's be reconciled. And we use, you know, they use these uh, terms from the scripture that Jesus Christ about being reconciled one to another in love. Because God is love. It's a humanistic type of love. Because they don't understand that God is also righteous and without sin. And you have to be crucified in Christ and made conformed to his image by your flesh. It's not about loving the world. It's not about unifying the world. It's not about um, reconciling pagans with the Lord God of Israel. That is where the rubber hits the road. That is where uh, few that it will be that enter. Because only few people, only few disciples, only people that are the good ground, who abide in the vine, who is Jesus Christ, and know him now, they're the ones that are going to enter. They're the ones that Jesus is going to accept into heaven. Not the ones that say, well, Lord, didn't we do all these wonderful works in your name, which is in the end days, um, casting out demons and, and all these spiritual works. And he still says to them, depart from me, I never knew you. Um, so, okay, so just to recap, and I don't, I don't even know if people are going to understand what I'm saying or not, but I've been in a lot of ministry groups, and they, they, have, they have this premise that Jesus loves everybody. We should share the gospel with everybody. We can all come to the Lord. Jesus doesn't want any to be lost. Um, and we can all be unified. The world can be unified in Christ with the love of Christ. And these poor Muslims, they just don't understand. And so people like Canon Andrew White, which I believe he's sincere in what, he, what he's doing, but it's a different spirit, brothers and sisters, than the Holy Spirit of the Lord. It's a church spirit. It's a spirit of error. It's a Babylonian um, uh Mixing together um, the actual things of God and um, love for the world. And on that note of loving things of the world, you have to be able to give up all uh, your position, worldly position, status, and so forth in this world. Be willing to give up. Not that you have to give up. It's how you hold it. But be willing to give up. Um, Anything that would uh, interfere with your relationship in Jesus Christ. It doesn't, it's not talking about melding everything together in global unity and love for all brethren, for all humanity. It is not talking about that. But that's the spirit of deception, the great age of delusion that we're in. And I think that's what the man of sin um Second uh, Thessalonians and Revelation, that wicked uh, that is going to appear, do many signs of uh, wonders, is going to stand on. He's going to stand on reconciling the world, uh, loving your enemies as yourself. All these things that Christ was speaking to his actual disciples, who will naturally, uh, on a personal level, do that. But he's not talking about. Uh, um, doing it and unifying the world because God separated peoples of the world.
Okay, this is what God says. Satan wants to bring them all together. And so you have to use the sword of the spirit, to, to have the, the sword of the spirit, the two-edged sword, to be able to separate these, um, these truths uh, from lies. And so, I don't know, to put it in a, put it in an easy to understand message, I would say that this world unity and world love thing is of the spirit of error, where Jesus loves everybody, and we all can be reconciled to God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and, you know, and the world cry peace and safety, the Bible says. That's what I think we're going to see happen. And most people are going to say, well, that's the Lord. He just did miracles. The Pope of Rome introduced him. You know, um, but like I said, I'm going out on a limb here saying this, but I really think this is what's going to happen. I think this is what we might see within the next year or so. Um, and this is going to be uh, Satan uh, playing God. And let's not forget that Satan understands his scripture. Satan knows what Jesus Christ spoke to the disciples. And, you know, there's only the light of perfect truth, who is Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is just twist that just a little bit. It's like a, a prism that's broken up in all these different colors of light. Well, you have to have that prism break up and down into pure white light. That's like Jesus Christ. That's like the Holy Spirit. It breaks, takes all that broken up light, broken up since the fall of man, and turns it into that pure, unadulterated light. However, Satan is the angel of light, and he's going to counterfeit that. And he's going to probably use uh, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ to do it. But it's not going to be Jesus Christ. And then he's going to have a short reign on earth, and God's going to destroy him. Jesus Christ will destroy him with his actual ecclesia, actual people that have been made crucified and conformed to his image. It's not about loving the world. It's not about uh, bringing together world unity. Uh, Revelation 17, it says that the, the mother of harlots is drunk on the blood of the saints. Well, we know what martyrdom is because it's happening in the Middle East all the time. We, we, know, we know what that blood is like. But there's also a, a, a life is in this blood. Um, Redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1, 14, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even forgiveness of sins, Colossians 1, 14. The reason I'm reading that off is because it's right on my computer here, happened to pop up. Um, and that's, that's, that's uh, the true blood of the saints, Jesus Christ's blood. Uh, but the martyr church, the, the martyr church are, are um, people that are persecuted for his namesake. And basic persecution is just rejection of the world like Jesus Christ and, and the apostles suffered. But there's, um, it has nothing to do with world unity is what I'm saying. So you start seeing somebody come along and, and start speaking about the love of the Lord, love your neighbors, yourself and all. That's Satan. That's Satan using scripture to mimic the Lord God of Israel, to mimic Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to destroy him by the preaching of the word and by the brightness of his coming. And I think we're going to see that happen. We're going to see that happen, but first we're going to see that wicked, the man of sin, the son of perdition, uh, come out from the bowels of the earth. And it's funny because the Pope's all concerned about green energy and green energy taxes and, and the Mother Earth won't forgive us, but God forgives. And I can see a false spirit around us taking form. That's what I can see. And it all sounds good, and it sounds godly. And everybody's, oh, yeah, I like that. But it's a false spirit. It's a spirit of error. And that's what I think um, Satan incarnate, the man of sin, the son of perdition, that wicked, which everybody mis mis uh, mistakes as the word antichrist. An antichrist is somebody who starts off with the Lord Jesus Christ, but will not be conformed to his image. An antichrist is somebody who is an enemy of the cross, as Paul called them. 
they won't be made conformed on a personal level. And Antichrist wants to bring unity where he shouldn't have unity. Okay, so in a very broad sense, the man of sin will be an Antichrist. But uh, actually, the whore, the mother of harlots and her daughters are the Antichrists. Then the man of sin, Satan incarnate, is that wicked, the son of perdition, and who Jesus Christ will destroy with the uh, with a, a word of uh, you know of the speaking of the word, sword of his mouth, and the brightness of his coming. And uh, I think that's what you're going to see. I think that's what you're going to see. I think that uh, this son of perdition, Satan incarnate, is going to pretend to be Jesus Christ. And I wouldn't doubt. Everybody talks about the Temple Mount being rebuilt and the, the, the Antichrist, which is, should be the man of sin, uh, being worshipped as God in the Temple. But I think it's talking about a spiritual Temple. I think he's going to use the world church system, the Babylonian false church, this lovey-dovey church, world unity, to try to unify the world and, and be worshipped as God. That's my prediction. But that's not Jesus Christ. That's a spirit of error. That's somebody who's pretending to be Jesus Christ, um, the Lord God returned to earth to reign. But uh, that's not going to happen because the next time we see the Lord God come to earth, he's going to destroy that wicked. He's going to crush the head of the serpent from underneath. And uh, so this is my little take on what I think we're going to see. And like I said, it's just my personal opinion. I'm going out on a limb to say this. But it seems to me that all this stuff is starting to come together. This lovey-dovey, pink and fluffy, Jesus loves everybody. Love your brother as yourself. Love your enemies. Let's be reconciled together. Let's Islam and let's the Hindus and let's let's Christians. And all. God loves everybody. Let's all be reconciled. That's Satan trying to bring together the world. Because he wants to be God. Jesus Christ says he's going to destroy that when he comes back. And uh, many will come to him on that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we, do, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we perform miracles and healings? Well, there's false hearings and healings and there's false miracles. And Jesus still says, depart from me, I never knew you. And uh, Okay, I think I said enough. I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, I think this is the false church. And unless you have the Holy Spirit of Christ within you, I don't think you're going to be able to discern the difference. It says in the end days that if it were possible, even the elect, God's people would be deceived. And that's what I think is going on. Um, and I'm not really trying to beat up on these people because if they don't have the Holy Spirit of the Lord in them, they don't realize what they're even being used in. God bless friends and, uh, friends and uh, brothers and sisters of the Lord. Um, uh, tighten up your belt because uh, we're in for a heck of a ride. But our Lord is in control and he will deliver us. Good night.